we got the uh, we got the cutter on the arbor here, or the uh, cutter blank on the arbor here, and I wanted to show you a couple of different steps. We'll have a couple of different videos on all that, but I wanted to show you some of the tools I made real quick, and then I'll show you actually how I use them. Now this here is out of uh, the book I was talking about by Robert Porter. This is my version of a radius tool grinder. Um, <clears throat> I made it out of aluminum. It was all practice and um, experimental. I think I might I might remake this. I'll have to see. The uh, the neat part is that this this is going to come right out of there, and when it's mounted in the cross slide, it'll sit uh, vertical like this, and then you'll you'll spin this. Okay, one of the key measurements on this is this edge right here where your form tool is going to sit against and this center point. So this center point right here, pivot, uh, center of that pivot is 3 sixteenths for this one. I was going to say it can be whatever you want. I suppose if you wanted to use quarter inch uh, but he mentions 3 16 so I use 3 16 so this leading edge here and the center of this is as close to 3 16 apart as you can get it because what's going to happen is when we loosen these set screws here we'll figure out in our paperwork what our form tool radius is going to be after we get going through all of this. Uh, I debated about talking about how to get some of these specific numbers, but uh, it gets super involved and it take hours for me to explain it. So I'm just going to jump right to what I have here. Um, for my, this particular module, I need a 0.266 millimeter radius on my forming tool. So the key here is you put your cutter in here or your form tool and you center it over this just eyeballing it over the center point. Get it up there and I'm going to stick in some um, feeler gauges. That's 0.266, I have 0.27. So when I stick these in here and then tighten this down, essentially that's offsetting my tool edge 0.27 millimeters off center so when I grind it it'll have a that size radius it works um, along with that I'll tighten this up along with that I wanted to mention that um, we had these cutters I had made a pinion already and I had made a 10 tooth, no wait a minute, I had made an 8 tooth cutter. So what I'm going to do is make a, I haven't decided, a 10 or a 12 tooth cutter. And just see how that performs in comparison. That'll be a good experiment. Um, the grinding wheel, simple grinding wheel, I have a real fine stone that I'm going to use. And I just quick show you after this form tool radius gets ground then we're going to look at how we set it up in this now this is my sign bar attachment to give me uh, radial flank angles 
um, for making these particular cutters. A uh, little design on how I went about that. I'll talk about that later in another section. Okay, we'll move over to the lathe and I'll show you how I set all this up. Okay, here's what we're looking for. This is out of Malcolm Wilde's book. We have a little drawing of a clock wheel tooth. We're looking for this radius right here when we grind our form tool to a specific radius. I was originally using my regular cross slide here but then I thought hey why not use this other thing I've got a production cross slide that is going to work much better for these. I've, uh, I've messed with it once to see how it worked. The nice thing about this is I can set my stops in the X and the Y um, travel which is nice for well for grinding this form tool and when I cut the cutter blank um, it'll stop it. Just Put a little angle right on measure. here for some reliefs and basically uh, gonna be worrying about this. We're gonna put uh, an angle on this first of all approximately seven degrees I suppose seven to ten but I'm just going to set it at seven okay and then what I did here is I uh, made a slot um, uh, slot here now slots in here but this piece fits in the slot with a little t-nut that um, we'll hold this true. We'll just hand tighten that and get her. Okay, now I'll <clears throat> back this off. This is the neat part about being able to take this in and out. We can mess with it a little bit. So once you're, if you're in the middle of grinding, just pop it out of there and you can take a look at it. All right, I want this all over here a little bit farther. One measurement we're going to have to pay a little attention to is our um, X here. Okay, good and snug. put these stops on there so that's locked in there so basically I'm going to worry about this okay
Okay, good. Um, we have the uh, everything locked down here. We got our angle on here. Then we're going to move this whole tool over, holding it tight here to the 90 degrees, to where it's just touching the face of the of the wheel. The wheel's got a little bit of a little wobble in it, but that still work. Okay, so it's touching. Then I want to zero my micrometer here, my dial indicator. And then I'll just back it away. Now, rotating this over 90 degrees, I want to get, uh, I think he says, 0.3 millimeter away from, from the tool. Or from, I'm sorry, from the grinding wheel. So... There's point two. There's point three. So then what we'll do, this is my little Allen wrench here. Loosen these just a little bit. Not loose, but so it falls apart. But just a little bit. Then I'm going to push, push my tool up to the wheel. I loosen it a little bit more than that. Okay, so it's just touching. Then I snug these back down. Okay, what I'm going to do now is is grind this to get this radius and I'll slowly move it closer. Uh, this is a little tricky because I'm, I'm, I like to hold it tight as I'm working it back and forth. Um, I don't know if I should figure out a different design or not, but this does end up pretty accurate. Let's see, I'm gonna give this a test here. Okay. Okay. Now, I realize you should cover all your stuff. Um, this little bit of grinding, I'm not going to worry about it today. It's, that way we can see everything. And Let's get it going here. Okay. Now I'm going to go past 90. I'm going to move it in. I wonder if I can move it in here with the nut instead of the... I don't know if you guys can really see anything. Time. Pass ninety back up.
almost there. zero. It's getting the full grind on it. It's good. Okay. Now, let's see. Looking pretty good. Um, I'm going to get at that under the microscope. Take a look at it under the microscope. It looks good. It's, uh, it's got a nice finish on the radius there. Uh, that was a little burr on there. So I cleaned the burr off, but I did not uh, dress up any of the edging yet. Uh, I'll probably take a, a fine stone just to, just to smooth it out just a little bit. Uh, let's see. Here's my... See if I can show you this a little closer. There's that very end. You see that little shiny spot on there? Okay. It's uh, it's got a good radius to it. I'm gonna measure it with my uh, comparator here. Let me just take a look at that. See what I'm coming up with. Let's see. Okay, everything measures out just fine. Now, what we're concerned about mostly here is this very, this edge here, that's going to give our flank the side of our tooth form, and this part of the radius. It looks pretty good. Get it real close up here on that radius. Pick that up. Some smoke on it. Okay. Doesn't have a whole lot of relief in it. A little bit, but not a whole lot. I might change that angle. Other than that, we'll move on to our next step. Talk to you soon.